Hey everyone, welcome back to Bowling Boulevard. That's right, it's a place just across the tracks from that liberal wasteland, Sesame Street. Bowling Boulevard, it's in the same neighborhood as the Sesame Street show, but it's the real street, not the made for TV street. Warning, hide the kids, hide the wife, because Bowling Boulevard exposes the dark side of liberal wokeism, a place where American rationalism and common sense go to die. Bowling Boulevard, it was once a beautiful and nice area, but once those creepy commie characters from Sesame Street grew up, they ruined the boulevard. And now, with a wave of criticism hitting Democrats from AOC's hypocritical trip to Florida to their ridiculous handling of the Omicron variant, I thought it'd be a good idea to get the liberal perspective from the boulevard. And I know how much Dems hate to go on conservative television, so this is a rare moment. On the phone with us, please welcome, from the boulevard, Antifa Annie. Hey, Eric, how are you? Please, just call me Antifa. <laughs> fine, 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 Antifa. So you heard about AOC, right? She tells people to wear masks and supports firing them if they don't take the vaccine. And then after people called her out, she waves them off and says, oh, you're just mad at me because you can't be with me. What did AOC do wrong? Honestly, I mean, she's not wrong. Everyone does want to hook up with her. She's so amazing. I swear, the next Ruth Bader Ginsburg, with those hoop earrings and everything. Look, Eric, <laughs> you Republicans need to calm down. AOC is just living her best life. Hashtag girl boss, hashtag yes queen, hashtag I stand with Jesse. And by the way, those drag queens with AOC were drag amazing. I'm not even sure what that means. Well. Well, Annie, what about AOC wanting to force people to take the vaccine? I mean, why would you be okay with being forced to do something against your will? Who cares? Like, legit, I'm with the slick daddy Jimmy Kimmel and the king of Colorado on this one. If you don't get the vaccine, you should probably die. And it's your fault. I mean, would you rather be in a world with Aaron Rodgers or Joey Behar? Oh, don't you just love like Joey Behar? Legit. Literally, she's perfect. Like legit. I would rather go into a coma than live in a world with Joy Behar and no football and Aaron Rodgers. All right, fine. Clearly we disagree here. But what about old Joe Biden's Build Back Better plan? Don't you see how Biden's spending plan will bankrupt the country? Don't get me started on that awful Kristen Cinema. Seriously, she doesn't know how to government at all. Antifa, give me the phone. Listen, Eric, BLM Barry here. Joe Manchin is a simp and purposely screwing our plans for a communist utopia. Like what the great Lord Karl Marx wanted. Oh my gosh, BLM Barry, are you telling me you're a communist? Really? Of course I am. And anyone who's not is an evil Nazi, especially if you're white, because white people are the real problem in this world, not violent radicals who loot Stop. and destroy towns like us. We're bringing real change to the world. Stop with the Nazi references, please. Real change? What kinds of changes are you bringing anyway? Well, look around you, Eric. Don't you see all the homeless people in your cities? What about all the boarded up windows? Do you see looted stores? What about the high crime rates? Do you get a chance to look at some of America's homicide stats? They're through the roof, all thanks to us. And it's all for racial justice. Isn't that right, Ryan? Yeah. Good job, guys. You really showed us. Wait a minute. Who, who's that? This is Ryan. He's white and gets blamed for everything bad here. I'm sorry, guys. This was my fault. My parents shouldn't have ever met up in the first place. Even though they're from a different country, all of the problems that America has ever had was their fault. That's right. Oh, my gosh. Where are you guys anyway? We're waiting in line to get our COVID antibody treatments. Dr. Fauci's orders. Yeah, Barry and I have been waiting for like 15 minutes. What about you, Ryan? How long have you been waiting? About three hours. White people aren't allowed to get COVID treatments here. <laughs> at least not before everyone else. So I've just been waiting at the back of the line. That's right. And don't you forget it, pig. I'm sorry, guys. I know. It was my fault for thinking I should get equal medical treatment as everyone else just because I'm sick. Oh, my gosh. I think Annie's white, isn't she? I'm not sure. This is all getting out of hand. See, this is what happens. You indulge one of these crazy liberals, and they all chime in with their violent communist ideas, and they have a human punching bag. Poor Poor Ryan. I mean, seriously, folks, this was really eye-opening, wasn't it? Get to see what's going on inside their heads, behind the scenes. Excuse me, Eric. Why aren't you wearing a mask? <laughs> no, it's Karen! Quick, control room, hang up the phone. 
few seconds there, I was worried she'd jump out and jump into the screen and attack me like her mom did to that 80-year-old man on the plane. Remember that guy? It was definitely tough to hold a whole interview with these people. Maybe next time we can tackle education with the CRT monster and foreign affairs with Vegan Vicky. It all goes down in Bolton Boulevard. We're going to bring in our panel to react to the woke takeover of Sesame Street on Bowling Boulevard. Vivek Ramaswamy is here. He's back with us. He's the author of this book, Woke Inc. And Michael Knowles is back with us, too. He's host of the Michael Knowles Show. Knowles, Bowling Boulevard, a little woke Sesame Street action there. What do you think? That was an astounding documentary, Eric. I, I, I was hoping for something more fantastical, but frankly, that's basically just what I see around our, our culture these days. Steeped in reality, Vivek, that's the way we play here, right? Filmed live from San Francisco, as best I could tell, or Portland. <laughs> I couldn't tell the difference quite, but it was one of the two, I'm thinking. So, you know, we're, we're, having good, we're gonna have some fun with Bowling Boulevard going forward, but we do. Let's talk about the stories that were just portrayed in Bowling Boulevard. Number one, AOC, the hypocritical wokester from New York hanging out in Florida. Vivek, I'll start with you. If they, if they didn't have double standards, they'd have no standards at all. Look, I think that AOC, I mean, she just is at least doing a favor to the actual entire country to at least put on the table the, li the liberal hypocrisy at issue here. Do as I say, not as I do. But I think that it goes beyond, Eric, just the individual hypocrisy. It goes to the hypocrisy of the policies as well. In the name of advancing black lives or the Black Lives Matter movement, they're actually advancing policies that are palpably setting back not only black people, but all people in cities across this country even further back. And I think this culture of the AOC left is really a bit different than even the Bernie left that at least used to argue about economic issues, about who got what. And I'm on a different side of the, that spectrum than Bernie. But AOC is really taken in a different direction with the new AOC left focusing on this new identitarian view of how we how we cash out our disputes. And I think that that actually leaves us even more divided in the end, where we're now talking about race and gender far more than we're actually even talking about the economic issues that the old left used to want to talk about. I kind of long for the days where at least the left would go back to talking about economic redistribution rather than the whole racial and gender injustice gala that AOC is all about. So that's where I'm at on and it. And Michael, and Michael, the other story in, in, on Bowling Boulevard over there was this, this story out in New York, which just blew us away. We talked about it yesterday. We'll talk about it with you, um, where they went through the hierarchy of who's going to get monoclonal antibodies in, in the state of New York. And, and they, t they specifically tell administrators to put white people at the back of that line. What are your thoughts on that? I'm hoping that my Sicilian heritage will give me a little bit of a leg up. I identify as a swarthy American, so I don't know. Maybe that means I get to skip a few people. This, this is pretty disgusting, and it's pretty anti-American, but it has become mainstream. And actually, there, there is a little bit of an AOC tie-in here, which is that AOC is accusing all of her critics of just having pent up sexual frustration. That's the only reason that they would possibly criticize her. And, and the left has done this to the right for a long time in America. They have said that the conservatism is a series of irritable mental gestures. We're all just uh, psychopaths and we all have mental problems. And that's, that's the only reason you would oppose their plans. And now you're seeing these pathologies play out in real life. The, the, the creation of a cat system of Americans where, where you'll be judged on the color of your skin or, or your sexual identity. Yeah. Uh, you, you're, you're seeing what the left has done for a long time, which is project their own behaviors onto their political opponents. Correct. Yeah, there you go. It's projection right there because it's not only about how, they're, how people are treated, it's actually how they're being medically treated, which is get a, a very scary. I have a, a quick question for the state of New York. I'm very serious about this. Rachel Dolezal, a white teacher who identified as black, where does she get in line? Does she have to go to the back? Or does she get to identify as an African-American and get to the front? I'm being very serious about that question. Vivek and Michael, always good having you both on. Thanks for joining us. Great to be with good you.